Hello everyone, I am Tassa and today I'm going to be going over the Black Magic Woman event in which Tao Ray and the Spider Knight were both added to Zolkari. This also makes it so Zolkari has is the first kingdom to have 11 troops, so I'll be going over teams that you can use with all of the 11 troops. So let's get into this. First of course, let's go over the uh, initial two which were just added. Uh, one thing to note is, uh, we saw this with the Hellcat event not too long back, but it's pretty much confirmed at this point. All Epic Packs now only give three minor trait stones instead of their previous four. I guess they just thought it was a bit too much, a bit too much value, because uh, the Epic Pack does indeed have the best Arcane value. You're only paying 200 glory per Arcane trait stone, plus you're getting all of the other resources. Anyways, Talray, uh, a pretty interesting troop. It uses the new web mechanic that was just added a week or two when 2.01 went live. It deals uh, damage to an enemy, deals double if they're webbed, and then webs them. So it's uh, similar to uh, quite a few other troops that place an effect on a troop and then does double damage. Kind of like how Scale Guard does poison and does double, and how uh, Swamp Lash does uh, entangle and does double. And so it's basically another one of those troops. What's pretty interesting though, is of all those troops that do double and apply that effect, She's the only one that actually has arcane and double damage to her. So she has arcane, so every single time anyone casts, including herself, she'll be gaining one magic. But technically that's two in most instances, because if they're webbed, that number is going to be doubled. So uh, she's the only one out of any of the status effect ones that do that. Plus she has stalker to the status effect that she does, uh, which gives uh, twice as much damage if they're webbed. So she has some pretty good synergy with all of the effects that she does and is really powerful when the enemy team is webbed. Unfortunately, there isn't too many things that can currently do web, and most of them, luckily most of them are in Zolkari though. Actually, I think all of them are in Zolkari, if I'm not mistaken. So at least you'll be able to get team bonuses when you make teams with Talray. And other than that, we have the Spider Knight, who also now has a web ability. This deals damage to an enemy and then webs them, pretty similar to a couple other commons that do a similar effect. But it does have decent damage, unlike some of them. It's trait-wise, uh, not really that good. You probably don't even need to trade it. But there is something really unique, though. And that is the Arcane Death Trait Stone. As most of you know, the Sorcerer class is actually one of the best classes in the entire game. So if you want to get the Hero Sorcerer class upgraded, now is the time. Because it costs 18 uh, Death Arcane Trait Stones to be able to fully max it out. And you can buy that right here if you have the uh, correct glory amount. It's almost like 6,000, like what is that? Like 5,300, 5,400 glory or something. Somewhere around there to be able to afford all the arcane deaths to be able to upgrade Sorcerer. But Sorcerer definitely is one of the best classes out there. Let me actually go to it just real quick to show you guys. Um, for any of you that are actually interested in doing it. If you just go to class, go over to Sorcerer. You get the Sorcerer class from... Um, the Karkarath Kingdom. So uh, it unlocks from the bonus quest line at the end there. So let's go back into uh, Hero. Class. Sorcerer. Customize. And of course this is what you'd be going for if you were to fully trade it. Which is its Dark Channel. It is a 50% chance to gain one magic every turn. It is really good with purple full AoE weapons and stuff like that. You get uh, purple mana bonus. It's actually pure purple too. Which is why it requires the arcane death. And it's just an extremely powerful ability. Because after a couple turns you're just getting so much magic. And as the game goes on and on you just get ridiculous amounts of magic. And it's actually one of the best things to defend with. Especially early on if you can get a fully traded sorcerer class and just put it on your defend team. Because most people who are invading you are going to be a little bit slower. And um, if you have dark channel you'll just be getting stronger and stronger the more you delay them. And you'll eventually just like one or two shot them. So that is that. Let me give out a redeem code real quick, as I do with all of these um, uh, event videos that go over events. It is DM and for RC MC M6 S2. Uh, let me just repeat that again. <laughs> ZM N4 RC M6 S2, and it'll give the normal reward of two maps, one gem key. 200 souls and 2,500 gold to the uh, first 200 people on PC and mobile who claim the reward. Also, the glitch in the background doesn't work anymore, so yay! No more shop glitch in the background. That was fixed in 2.01. Anyways, let's actually get into some teams with all of these now. 
go into troops, go all the way down, wherever I have these, da da da, and let's go to some teams. First off, we have a Spider Knight team, put him with Herald of Chaos. Herald of Chaos you get from completing the Blighted Lands questline, he's the epic you get at the end of it. He's actually really powerful now because uh, even though the uh, patch notes didn't really say anything about him, he was technically buffed in two ways. The first is with Death Touch. Death Touch got its uh, two-turn delay removed, so now it can actually kill from the very first turn, which is very, very powerful. That's a 10% chance to kill someone before they even have the chance to cleanse it. Plus, every single turn, you still have the chance of killing him. So, uh, Death Touch is actually very, very powerful now if you can get it fully traded. One other thing that they fixed, which was actually a glitch earlier with how um, the code was in the game, is um, the reduced stats. Uh, in the past, any kind of troop that had a reduced stat on the ability would never hit HP. It would hit armor, attack, and magic. And that was a little bit bad because that means uh, one third of the time you were hitting armor. And normally armor would do nothing since you probably already reduced it to zero. But now it can uh, hit HP as well. So um, it makes uh, stat reduction actually a lot more powerful than it was previously. So Herald of Chaos, definitely a good troop. We have with Spider Knight. And Miss Stalker, Miss Stalker will be providing that extra magic boost, as well as Giant Spider, and then Giant Spider just with the cast, and pretty much one good extra turn cast off of the Giant Spider. We'll fill up all three of them, and you just keep going from there. Uh, Spider Knight is really good for being able to disable things that are really magic dependent, since it's uh, web, uh, for any of you that do not know yet, any uh, troop that has the web stats effect will have zero magic for its duration. It's basically like in a tangle, but except for... It doesn't do it for an attack, it does it for magic. So very powerful against um, magic dependent troops that use uh, something like really important for magic. Like uh, if you use the on oh, Mist Stalker, he'd only be, you just take out all his magic. So all he'd be doing is three true damage and he would poison. <laughs> That's all he would do. So it can really reduce some troops down to pretty much nothing. So definitely a good troop to consider. Uh, Next up, we have the Reaver. Reaver, actually, in the past, used to be better than Knight Coronet. Uh, but they've rebalanced it to the point that uh, Reaver is now weaker than Knight Coronet. But for a couple months, he was actually a lot stronger than him. They used to both hit the first two enemies as well. But then Knight Coronet was changed to first and last. But pretty much with this team, we're just going for a standard Knight bonus. For some reason, uh, let's see, which one of these? Yeah, Reaver isn't a Rogue or a Knight. I'm surprised that one didn't get a second modifier or anything like that. But we do get one attack for Zuz two Zolkari and one attack and two armor for um, th uh, three knights, which is um, two attack, two armor total. Which is going to be good for Knight Coronet, which is going to be good for War. And, of course, mainly with Weaver, it just deals damage to the first two enemies. And if they're webbed, uh, you'll do an additional eight to both of them, or just the ones that are webbed. I actually haven't tested that out. I probably should have before doing this video. Um... I am not quite aware because it says uh, deal eight more damage if the enemies are webbed. Well, what's the, is that dependent on? <laughs> it's not that exp uh, it's not that good of an explanation on it. But we also have uh, Spider Knight here who will be placing that web, which will help make sure Reaver gets that bonus. Which is kind of why I thought this one might even be good as a knight because they're both the elf knight and he's in armor and everything. Might as well. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, but yeah, uh, that's the knight team that we have here. And we have it set to uh, plus two blue and plus one purple. We do this at minus one red, but plus one blue mainly for Knight Coronet and War. Plus one purple to make sure if you get a purple surge, uh, Spider Knight will have his ability in one turn. So the last common of, oops, I just completely went over one, the Spider. And this is actually the reason why this kingdom has um, 11 troops. Spider Swarm in the past actually not used to not count as a character in the game. There used to be two, the Evolved Gorgotha, which still doesn't count as a character in the game. That's the all-color Gorgotha that you fight at the end of the uh, Kazil uh, bonus questline. But there was also Spider Swarm. Spider Swarm used to not count as a troop at all. You couldn't obtain it uh, from drop pulls or anything. It was just a non-existing troop. But eventually it was added to Zolkari in when 2.0 went live. And so now uh, with the extra troops that Zolkari just got, it's the first kingdom to have 11. Anyway, Spider Swarm, you basically almost never use it in a starting team unless you want to kill it. It's mostly for a giant spider who summons the Spider Swarm. So if you're going to have a giant spider, you still need to upgrade your Spider Swarm because of how summons work now. You'll need it so it has traits at the beginning of it and everything else like that. 
There's also a lot of Zolkari rebalancing. As you can see, uh, the spider has Slippery instead of... Um, uh, which is immunity to web instead of the immunity to hunter's mark that it used to have. And it also has a 100% chance to poison now instead of the 50% chance it used to have. Which is really strong uh, early on. Or pretty much any time in the game. Because I know in my Let's Play account I actually had some struggles with it back when it was only doing 50%. But now that it's at 100% you don't really need to worry about poison um, not implementing when you cast in. For only 6 mana it's one of the best uh, poisoners in the game actually. Uh, maybe Scale Guard might be slightly better, since it does a lot more damage as well as Scale Guard. But still, very powerful. And you have Giant Spider, who summons him, and uh, create, converts all to purple, or all of a select cover to purple, which will be filling up both Inferno King and Dolkafer, both of which have a small amount of split damage, which is going to be very helpful in making sure you can uh, get those last kills. Like, if something's low on HP, that's the best time to use split damage, especially if it's like the first troop, only at like 4, 5, 6... Something like like a one-digit number. Because it'll be very likely that split damage will kill. And something interesting about Dolkifer is he actually um, summons a giant spider. Who then summons a spider swarm. So you get a lot of summoning out of this deck. And it's pretty much just endless summoning. So a lot of fun to try out. Next up, let's move on to the rares. We have Dark Maiden who got a complete change when 2.01 went live. Which I haven't explained yet. So let's go into that now. Uh, it used to uh, do damage to an enemy and then poison them. Yeah, I believe that's what it used to do for only six mana. Now it's quite a bit different. It transforms all yellow gems to a chosen color, which is going to be really good at countering things like Mercy, which is pretty popular right now. It then gives life to the first ally, and it's boosted at three to one based on how many yellows are converted. So a pretty interesting troop. It's mostly just a yellow counter and healer now. Uh, doesn't actually fit that well uh, with um, the rest of Kazel, other than the fact that yellow isn't really used. Uh, because uh, Kazel troops don't really need HP for anything. I don't know, maybe that will change in the future. Uh, but she still has all of the same traits. Or actually, no, um, one of her traits, I completely forget which. Uh, actually, yeah, it was a Fire Link or something here uh, for magic. Or not Fire Link, whatever the thing was that gave, gives magic bonus for reds. Uh, she used to have that. That has been replaced with Snare. Which uh, allows her to do web whenever she does skull damage. So that's uh, a little bit uh, interesting. She's more of like a tank now. A support tank than the offensive uh, than the offensive troop she used to be. So still a really decent troop. But for the most part, uh, not that needed. And in this deck, you can kind of see we're using the, basically the only troop that actually works on HP. Um, Bull Taurus actually got upgraded too. He used to have a 1 to 2 ratio. Now it's 1 to 1. Very, very powerful. I did a video on it showing how uh, Bull Taurus plus 3 Dust Devils can actually complete any challenge in the game. Or any of the new Explore thing that was added in 2.01. So definitely good to consider. But yeah, we have the HP buff for him. We have Hellcat who will be feeding all three of the Reds. And Emperina who does a full heal, which is really good. If you're going to use Bull Taurus, always get Emperina with it. Because that's a full heal plus cleanse, plus even more attack. It's just going to be ridiculous in how high you can get Bull Taurus's HP and stuff like that. So really good to consider. Just make sure you don't get mauled or something by it. A lot of decks are still pretty bad to maul, even with the counters that have been added to it. And with that in mind, we're actually going on to an all-monster deck uh, and with using two Imperviouses. Impervious is really strong. Uh, Impervious is basically immune to everything now. It's immune to the new stun, the new web, um... Now to Devour, now to Mana Burn, as well as all the old effects. Uh, there's pretty much nothing that can touch it. Unfortunately, Impervious have been dropped down. Only eight troops currently have Impervious now, these eight. Uh, Behemoth, Carnex, Dragon Cruncher, Dwarven Miner, Dwarven Slayer, Fortress Gate, Plague, and War Sphinx. And some of those are pretty hard to obtain, like uh, Behemoth, Carnex, and Plague. And some of them are pretty useless, like Fortress Gate, Dwarven uh, Slayer. Dwarven Miner and War Sphinx. So that really only leaves you with about four. And that's Epic, Legend, Legend, and Mythic. So a little bit hard to get. And they all have it as their last trait, except for Behemoth, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Uh, come on. Click. Yeah, last, last, last. Yeah, every single character except Behemoth has it as their last trait, too, which makes it even harder to obtain because you'll need all of the Arcanes to get there. Um,. But yeah, uh, Behemoth here, who is a really good tank now with Immense and Impervious. Probably one of the uh, better all-around tanks in the game right now. And he just does some full AoE damage. 
We have two troops here that hit based on weakest, a Marsh Raptor and the Night Terror. Uh, this team is built around the Night Terror, but for the most part, you can kind of ignore Night Terror. Uh, I find him to be pretty weak, the change that he got. As you can see, he's actually been changed from red, purple was it, I believe, to red brown, which is a, um, or was it green, purple? Excuse me, I don't, I don't remember at this point, but it has been changed to brown, red, and it actually, yeah, it definitely was uh, red, purple or something, or green, purple. Uh, it actually stores the magic link too, which is unfortunate because it doesn't use magic at all. Uh, I mean, purple at all. So, it, this uh, link is kind of pointless. Actually, Vampire Lord had the same thing back when they switched the color. They forgot to switch the trait. We go to v Vampire Lord, who used to be red-yellow. He was changed to brown-purple uh, not too long ago. He still has Fire Link as if he's still red, which is kind of completely pointless because he doesn't use red anymore. So, that's a little uh, unfortunate oversight with it. Uh, one magic also isn't a lot. If that was two magic, this troop might be a little bit better. Or if they reduced the damage by a lot and made it even more magic. Uh, for the most part, you don't really need Night Terror, but just for fun, since it has Monster Bond, I figured I'd make it all Monster Bonus. Uh, we get two armor, two life, and one magic for it. And uh, if you want to just keep hitting down the weakest troops, you could use something like this. For the most part, though, Night Terror, you can kind of ignore. Uh, not really a troop you'll need. Next up, we have a Spider Queen deck. I was testing this one out on stream uh, quite a bit. <laughs> It was uh, decently fun. As long as Talrae doesn't die, it's going to be decent. Uh, Spider Queen also got a bit of a change in this patch. She still has the same color, all the same traits. But um, she got the addition of a web on her ability. So she still does everything the same, but now she also does a web whenever she casts. So uh, that's a decent buff to her. So really good troop Spider Queen is for making sure anything that casts a lot or is very magic dependent won't be able to get anything. Because she doesn't just mana drain, she also webs them, which is going to make their magic useless. So, a very good troop to consider if you're uh, having trouble with troops that tend to cast a lot or are very magic dependent. This will just completely keep them down and make sure they won't be able to do anything to you. And your growth, of course, we set the uh, banner to brown yellow, so it would be able to quickly get up our mana on everything. And as soon as you uh, web something with Spider Queen, reduce their armor down, Talrai will be able to take off the kill. And next up is Giant Spider, probably one of the strongest troops that you have in uh, Zolkari for a couple of reasons. One of them is because it is the only troop that can convert any color that also summons something. So summoning can be very, very powerful because uh, it's, it's essentially just creating another troop. You just made the bat match from a 4 to 4 into a, an infinite against 4 <laughs> in most cases. If you play uh, everything correctly. So a very, very powerful troop. Also has Magic Link. Which I don't believe most of the other converts even have on the color. So it'll be able to create purples. Which it even boost based on its own traits. Plus it has big. So it'll be getting even more life from all of its extra turns. It's also very commonly used with Green Seers. Just so you can loop between Green Seer. Green Seer makes green. And then you just get uh, Giant Spider up. Then you feed Green Seer. And you just keep looping back and forth. Over and over again. And we have Behemoth up front, who will be utilizing that, gaining 4 life every single time they loop back. Just every single 4 times or more match, he'll get more life. He has Impervious too, so no Devourers, nothing like that. We'll be able to get through him. And we have Creeping Death. Creeping Death is actually, uh, arguably, the strongest weapon in the game right now, since they upgraded Deathmark from a 2-turn delay to a 0-turn delay, which is a huge buff for Deathmark. It hits all enemies, and then places Deathmark on the weakest, and the strongest for the most part on the weakest one it normally won't because if you kill the weakest enemy it's not going to retarget so if you like use the scythe and it kills uh someone it's only going to place one death mark you know that death mark will be on the strongest uh which is the highest one with the highest hp plus armor but uh if you end up killing one well that other death mark won't retarget and it'll just not place anything so you only get one death mark out of it if creeping death happens to kill but creeping death it's actually a fairly easy weapon to get uh all you need to do is win uh, 250 wins from the Necromancer class, which is from um, from Kedar. And then you can just get Karakoras uh, Sorcerer class, max that out with all the Arcane Deaths you get. And then just use Sorcerer plus the uh, Necromancer weapon, and you're pretty much good to go with an extremely powerful deck. <laughs> all you really need is to get Creeping Death... Oops, why am I going to the guild? Uh, creeping Death plus... Um, 
Creeping Death plus uh, Sorcerer class, and you're pretty much good to go to kill any team. That alone is all you need to uh, win pretty much any match, uh, especially early on. And where were we? Sorry. Giant Spider. So yeah, uh, that is that team. Definitely consider upgrading Sorcerer class this week and uh, try pairing it with the Necromancer weapon. Very strong. Next up, we have Dolkafer. Dolkafer is actually a little bit weak, even though he is uh, he's a summon that summons another summon. <laughs> he's just like a whole summon loop. Uh, the main reason he's a little bit weak is because he's really dependent on a slot being cleared, which is why I put Dwarven Slayer here. You fill him up, he dies, and then you got a free slot. <laughs> it, it works out. Also, something I didn't say about Dwarven Slayer last week, because um, when I did it in the morning, the morning video... <laughs> Uh, they didn't actually have it updated in game yet. He actually has 40. Uh, earlier it was just like a 50 static damage. But it's actually 40 plus magic now. So it might actually be higher than 50 or lower than 50. Depending on your magic and how far you have him leveled. But yeah, that, uh, interesting troop. Uh, for the most part, you never really need him. I'm using him here because he kills himself. And we'll be able to utilize that with Giant Spider. With Dolkafer to summon. We kind of just have Taraxxus here for full AoE. Keep chipping them down. Plus it will feed Dolkafer mana next up we have a tyree a little bit of a weird tyree deck as you can see here we don't actually have a damage source well this isn't actually a damage source team what i use this for or i don't anymore because i have so many is to farm maps uh goblin shaman tyree dryad tyree is really 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 good at farming maps uh you can do it in something like uh go to broken spire and pretty much pick any challenge that has a Fortress Gate lead. And you'll be able to easily farm tens of dozens of treasure maps per match. And uh, that's basically the best way you can farm treasure maps. And this is one of the most efficient teams that I've found for being able to do it. Because all you have to do is just keep using Goblin Shaman. You get an extra turn for it. Plus, you get a bunch of greens. You even get some HP to help keep you alive in case they're really starting to damage you. You have Tyrees here, who of course 20% chance per cast to get a map. Plus it destroys 21 gems you use on purple or green if you want. And then you just got both of your Tyrees up most likely. We have Dryad here, who did lose its Impervious, but instead got Nature Link. Which uh, for this team in specifically is actually a buff, not a nerf, which is really good. Overall Dryad has been nerfed. She would have been better with Impervious than Nature Link. But uh, might as well use, uh, utilize that for teams that benefit from it, like this one. Um... But Dryad's ability is still very powerful. Gives 5 life to an ally, heals them by a lot, uh, based on magic. Uh, gives them barrier, and then creates a bunch of Grange. Which, for the most part, you'd be using on either Goblin Shaman or whoever's taking the most damage in your team. To make sure they get a barrier, make sure they get healed, and they'll never die. And you basically just keep using both the Tyrees until you have so many maps that you can just play the Treasure Hunt minigame until <laughs> you can't handle it anymore. So that's how you farm maps. Really good team for it. Uh, Goblin Shaman, Tyree, Tyree, Dryad Tyree. And if you only had uh, one Tyree, you can probably replace out the other Tyree for something else that creates green or uses the other manas. Because I don't think we're using red here. So I guess something with red or something. Just to make sure you can keep looping. And now for the last two. Uh, Tal Ray, we have her here with a Jarrow Fire Mantle and Hellcat. Hellcat, of course, will be feeding all of them. Jarrow Fire Mantle will be looping. And it's pretty much just a loop deck to make sure... Talray's Arcane keeps going up and up and up, and eventually you'll be able to do so much damage with both the Talray's. And a double Talray cast on any enemy will definitely be death, because it does. Uh, the second one will do double due to the web, which is going to be a lot of uh, damage with all the Arcane bonuses. And lastly, we have the Web Spinner. Uh, web Spinner is a very interesting troop, very magic dependent though. Like you can see, uh, ironically, even though it's a Web Spinner. If Web Spinner gets um, webbed, he's actually pretty useless, or she's actually pretty useless, because all of her damage is based on magic. If she had a uh, web on her, she would do zero damage to everyone. She'd still, create, she'd still create all the green gems and poison everyone, but her damage would be zero to everyone. It would just do those two things. It wouldn't even do any damage. But uh, definitely an interesting troop. It's one of the only two troops in the game that has three times skull damage. Uh, there is one with five, the bunny thing. Uh, but the uh, two with three times damage is Borealis, which is three times the freeze, and Web Spinner with three times the poison. What's interesting about poison, though, is poison, the only way to get it off is if it gets cleansed. Um, it doesn't have any kind of timer like every other status effect does in the game. 
So once you get them poisoned, they're pretty much poisoned unless they have a cleanse or immunity to it. So Web Spinner will pretty much always be getting three times skull damage, which can be very, very powerful. And it also got a change to one of its skills. Instead of having a Daemon Bond, which is plus two life to all Daemons, it now has the Snare ability, which means whenever it does skull damage, it'll be webbing that enemy, which is kind of where the whole Web Spinner is. Obviously, it'd be too overpowered if it webbed every single enemy. It still poisons every enemy, but at least it does have a web ability whenever it does skull so you, uh, you could essentially be doing three times skull damage plus webbing them every single attack, which is very, very powerful. Uh, in this deck, we have it with uh, Green Seer, who's going to be creating a bunch of greens as well as entangling. We have Spring Imp here, who's going to be entangling them all, plus gaining a bunch of magic whenever it casts and stuff like that. So very, very powerful. And Shegra, of course, to make a bunch of skulls, just to make sure Web Spinner will be able to get off its attack. So let's actually show a team or two with this. Actually, I should probably switch that banner before I get into a battle with it if I do decide to use that one. Because I don't believe I switched a banner from earlier. Oh, let's just take this quick tribute and head over to PvP. Oh, a nice battle too. Oh, Great Maul. Well, let's we see right here. We have a Great Maul who's going to be challenging us right here. Uh, I'm actually going to be trying out a interesting deck then. We're going to be trying out the Giant Spider deck with um, this one. With the Behemoth up front, Green Seer, Giant Spider, and Creeping Death. I don't have the correct class for it right now, but uh, it'll still basically do the same thing. We won't do as much damage with Creeping Death, but we'll still pretty much get it. Let me see. Can I switch class for free? Oh, never mind. We wouldn't be able to see in this menu. Let's just use this one and see how the battle goes. Yeah, Creeping Death plus Sorcerer Glass. Very, very powerful. Uh, I'm keeping it on Archer for now. Uh, won't make too... Or it would make actually quite a bit uh, difference. But uh, this should still be an easy win for us. So I'm not really concerned about using the correct class with it. Uh, we'll just take that. Take the purples. Got a Surge on it. Now we can just start converting and try looping that the best we can. Also, you just saw right there. Uh, for some reason, Maul did no damage to us. This is because he triggered his Hunger. And I don't know if this is a mechanic or a glitch, but whenever hunger, um, the Great Maul's hunger triggers on something that has impervious or any kind of immunity to devour, it actually does no skull damage. There's a 15% chance that Maul will do no skull damage to something that is impervious or indigestible. So, um, yeah, that's the thing that happens. I uh, don't know if that's intended or not, but that's how it currently functions in the game. So right now, we are trying to find a good cast. I really don't want to have to convert out our purples. I'm trying to convert out our greens somewhere, but there doesn't seem to be a good location for that. So I'm just going to take these purples and hopefully convert the reds next turn, which looks like we are going to be able to do. From the light of the earth. As you can see, a mensch just keeps triggering on our behemoth. Uh, there still is nowhere where we can really go that well. So I'm just going to take some yellows right here. Let's see what we can do next turn after we take some skulls. Uh, we could convert the browns, and I am. So we're going to go for that. And now we have Creeping Death up. But you do want to make sure before you use Creeping Death that the board is actually cleared. So we're going to take that. Make sure there's no extra turns anywhere. So we can see we can drop that. So you might actually want to do that before we end this turn. Behemoth just keeps getting tankier and tankier as we go. We'll take that real quick. Take the blues. And now all of our abilities are up. And at this point, we can just cast Creeping Death, cast Behemoth. I'm actually going to cast Behemoth first. Normally, you would want to do Creeping Death first. But as I stated earlier, if you actually kill something with Creeping Death, you're only going to get one death mark instead of two. Because it hits the weakest. And if the weakest one dies, you just lost your death mark. So we're going to use Behemoth first. Kill out the Great Maul. And that'll make sure we can get uh, double death marks when we cast this Creeping Death. We did align an extra turn plus some skulls for it, but that's not going to be too big a deal. It even got some blues. We'll just take those greens real quick. It'll take those skulls next turn, and that's not uh, anything, so let's just cast Creeping Death. And now we'll get two death marks on them. Uh, one on Famine and one on Queen Mab. So this turn, we'll just convert out the yellows and do it again. And we actually got a killer off of that. Uh, we'll just make sure there's no extra turns left on the board. Take that. And we're pretty much good to go. Just use another Creeping Death. And at this point, basically just another Behemoth or Creeping Death. And we're pretty good to go. Um, or we could hope for Death Mark. We kind of do need Skull Damage though, so we'll take this. 
And next damage source will kill him. Or if Creeping Death would actually trigger. Uh, let's just use it on blue. Or I should say Death Mark. And now he's also Entangled and Death Mark, so very useless. Let's just convert out the greens. Normally you would want to avoid using on green, but this match is already over, as you can see. So we'll just take the skulls, and that will be the match. And now let's see if I can use the Web Spinner team. Because Web Spinner can be a pretty powerful legend. If you get it frozen, it is pretty bad. But as long as Web Spinner doesn't get frozen or webbed, it is pretty much good to go. This is actually a really powerful team we're up against. So hopefully we'll be able to do good. Uh, Web Spinner will be at a little bit of a uh, disadvantage here because um, Famine's going to be reducing our stats every single time. So I might actually even switch them out real quick. Uh, I don't know if I want to leave. Uh, we'll risk it. Because every single time Famine hits on magic, it's going to be taking out three of our damage every single time. So that's going to be a really big hit to us. So we're just going to have to hope that he doesn't hit it too much. Uh, for this team, I'm actually going to be switching it to brown yellow. Uh, yellow so we can utilize the yellow that um, Mercy is going to be using. As well as brown to make sure we can get sugar up. So let me just find that banner real quick. And we can get into this match. So a pretty hard match in front of us. But we should still have a decent chance at winning. If we can get Spring, M up and Spring Imp up and entangle them all. Uh, there's pretty much very little that they'll actually be able to do to us. And let's just get into this. Okay, as you can see, all Mythics fully traded. Going to be a little bit of an interesting match here. That we could actually lose. So before just taking those skulls, we're actually going to be converting out the Browns right here. Even though our Shegra needs them, we need the mana more than Shegra needs to get it up right now. So we're just going to be taking all of the greens that we can possibly find. Uh, Spring Imp is getting plus one uh, magic every single time we do that though. You see we just webbed uh, Behemoth, I mean Behemoth, Great Maul there, which isn't really going to do too much to us. He doesn't use anything for magic, so that basically did nothing to him. Uh, let's just use our web spinner. I'm worried about the skulls. Want to overwrite as many of them as we can. Uh, as you can see there, we just got three times skull damage because it got poisoned. Um, so our legendary trait, three times skull damage to poison. We just one shot that uh, behemoth. Uh, why do I keep going to behemoth? Uh, Great Maul. So that was very powerful. Unfortunately, you just saw right there. Um, um, Bone Dragon is sturdy, so we couldn't poison it, which also means our skull damage couldn't uh, do the three times damage to it. This also means uh, our skull damage froze us because he has his legendary trait, Frozen Soul. So now we won't be able to get extra turns off of our greens, which is going to be a little bit hard now. Uh, because Frozen is very powerful against this deck. So we basically have to wait now until we get Unfrozen on it. So I'm just going to keep hitting it. I want it dead so it can no longer fro freeze us anymore. Uh, green Seer I kind of want to use, but the second we do, we're going to lose our turn. So I'm just going to cast Web Spinner again. And we don't get an extra turn because we're frozen. But I'll use it again next turn. And hopefully Famine won't get too much mana from it. That or we'll take some Skulls if Mercy aligns anything. So we got an extra turn. Famine's actually up already. So that's going to be hitting something right now. Hopefully not our Web Spinner. We really need that Web Spinner. Uh, of course. <laughs> well, luckily our Green Seer can still win this for us. Uh, green Seer, or not Green Seer. Spring Imp. Well, our Green Seer is going to assist it. Uh, from here, uh, a lot of choices we have. I'm pretty much sure I'm just going to take these Browns here. He'll take the Greens. And just trying to get that uh, Bone Dragon dead. And make sure we can get a good Shegra cast after that. So one more damage source, and that will be dead. Might even be able to kill it with our Spring Imp as soon as that gets up. And unfortunately, this board isn't giving us too many manas that we actually need. We'll just take this red, so then get a Surge. If we get a Brown Surge next match, we can actually, or next turn, right there. That would be really good. We are giving him an extra turn, though, which is slightly dangerous. So, um, I do want to go somewhere else, but that actually might be the only move we can do on the entire board. Actually, we can take those blues. And I think I am going to do that, because if we take those browns, he's going to get an extra turn. So I don't want that to happen. We're just going to take these blues and hope he uses his ability. Nope, he steals our browns. Uh, so now we kind of have to go for these purples just to make sure he doesn't get an extra turn off it right there. So we'll take that. 
And now it casts it on basically just one. We are frozen, but we'll get our ability up. Oh, we actually just cleanse our frozen. Perfect timing. Uh, from here, I do want to convert something. We'll convert these blues. We don't need them. Only cover we're not using right now, actually. Because Web Spinner uh, was using it. Take that. We got the skull down. Uh, Famine actually reduced our attack to the point that another skull will not kill it. So that's a little bit unfortunate. I'm going to... Uh, we can try casting this. It's 40 split damage. So there is a chance it will kill the Bone Dragon. So we really need the Bone Dragon killed here. Hopefully it'll do it. And it does not. <laughs> actually damaged the Bone Dragon the least out of all of them. So we got an extra turn there. Quite a bit of ability. Plus Famine. It's going to take Skulls though, which is uh, fine by us since it's entangled and can't do anything. Uh, hopefully next turn it casts Bone Dragon because if it does not, Famine's going to do a lot of damage to us. Actually, we have Shegra right now and this is a perfect time to cast it. We won't get an extra turn because we're frozen, but we really need the damage. And it's entangled, so hopefully that won't be undone next turn. So we take that. Uh, it's not... Let's see, it's still entangled, but it's not frozen. So we're just going to get that extra turn, do that one damage. And that's basically going to be it. It's going to take another skull, but it's not going to do anything. And another one. And now it's done. Uh, right here, we actually want it to take skulls. Unfortunately, I don't think we can actually align it in a way that it will take skulls. Um, we can hope for one to fall. Uh, but I don't believe I can actually align them in a way that he'll take skulls next turn. Nope. So he'll use his ability. That'll do a lot of damage to us. Luckily, it's on green seer, though. We don't need it uh, that much. Uh, we need her, but not as much as something like Shugra or, uh, or Spring Imp. So we'll just take these yellows. It's still entangled, actually. Going on for quite a bit of time on that entangle. So we'll take these greens. Hopefully, it'll still be entangled next turn. Yep. So it'll do zero damage right there. Very useful. Hopefully, a purple surge. Nope. It'll take those greens. And it is almost filled up back on Famine. Another Mercy cast. I believe it misses, though. Yep. This is really good in our favor as well. Uh, and we can green, green convert the yellows. So that will get up our green seer. A bunch of damage on her. She just keeps getting more and more powerful every turn that passes. And we have Shugger up. Uh, there's no guaranteed extra turn anywhere. But there's enough reds and skulls that we should work. And it does. So we'll get that. Famine keeps lowering our attack. So we're basically doing no damage with it. But it is enough that he should almost be dead. Uh, nope, not enough. But we can spring imp it, and that will pretty much be the game. Uh, just one more turn after. 21 HP. I mean, 20. We'll take that. Uh, Shugra's almost back up. Uh, I'll just take another skull, and next damage source kills it. That's pretty much this team. Unfortunately, it did get that pretty early web spinner team, which started making this team very slow. Because it's basically built completely around Web Spinner. But at least uh, later on, uh, Spring Imp gets so much damage. You can see right there. Look at her damage. She has 52 magic, 55 split damage. She starts getting a ridiculous amount of uh, damage with this team. So as long as Web Spinner lives, you don't get frozen. It can work out pretty well. But yeah, if you have any questions about the game or Zolkari Kingdom in general, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I do these event covers every single week with a redeem code so feel free to subscribe if you're interested in either of the two and now basically wrap it up for this video leave a like if you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching goodbye